Ah, hello, hello, my friends. Come on in, settle down, have a seat, and allow me to tell you a story. A tale so grim and so dark, it is guaranteed to send shivers down the spines of you and yours, everybody watching this video right now. So let's turn out the lights. So let's turn out the lights, put on our headphones, close our eyes, and absorb the world around us through the power of hearing. Everybody, eyes closed now. Listen. Shh, everybody be quiet. Listen to this. What's the scariest Disney ride you can think of? Some people would say the Haunted Mansion. Obviously, there's ghosts and zombies and ghouls. Others would say Dinosaur or It's a Small World, all for different reasons. Now, you're all entitled to your opinion on the scariest Disney ride to have ever existed. Maybe even extraterrestrial alien encounter has made some of your lists. But I'm here today to talk about an attraction that actively misled the guests who journeyed aboard it. A ride that originally didn't have a sign that warned you about dark places and scary dinosaurs or aliens that would eat maintenance workers above you. My friends, the scariest Disney ride to have ever existed does not exist today in the parks. And no, it's not the extraterrestrial alien encounter, it's Snow White and her adventures. At, in Fantasyland, okay, at the Magic Kingdom. Snow White, you say to yourself out loud. Go ahead, say it right now. Snow White. Snow White's Scary Adventures is not a frightening attraction. Snow White's Enchanted Wish at Disneyland is not a frightening attraction. And you are correct there, my friends. Snow White's Scary Adventures and Enchanted Wish were not the same attraction that I'm talking about right now. What I'm talking about is the 1971 opening day Magic Kingdom Dark Ride, Snow White and her adventures. They didn't even tell you it was scary. Why was this attraction so scary? Well, I thought you'd never ask. <clears throat> As mentioned earlier, most rides and attractions these days have warnings posted outside before you embark on your journey, warning you that the attraction features dark places and scary situations that not all people might enjoy. However, you would be forgiven for missing any warnings posted outside of a Snow White themed attraction. You go to Fantasyland on the opening day of Walt Disney World, October 1st, 1971. You've already been on Peter Pan's flight, Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. Now you want to pay a visit to old precious dear Snow White. And you, my friend, are not prepared for the hellscape that awaits you. The exterior of the attraction, much like the rest of Fantasyland at the time, was decorated to be a sort of medieval fair with blue and pink tents and flags. It looked very similar to the other, more light-hearted dark rides like Mr. Toad's and Peter Pan. Now, granted, Mr. Toad's wild ride did end with you dying and going to hell, but it wasn't really scary. The concept of dying and going to hell itself, yeah, maybe a little bit intense. The actual scene itself, sort of silly, sort of fun. There was nothing silly or fun about Snow White and her adventures. All right, <clears throat> let me paint you a picture. Upon boarding our ride vehicles, we would journey past the Wishing Well and the Evil Queen's Castle from the film while journeying toward the Dwarf's Cottage, hearing the song I'm Wishing playing faintly in the distance. Not so bad, especially because this part of the attraction was outside. The real scares began when we went into the show building. So almost immediately, we are greeted with a false sense of security. We hear the lovely music from the film. We're outside, it's a well-lit area. You can see the Dwarf's Cottage faintly out there in the middle of a glen, there's flowers. It seems like it's going to be a fun dark ride, but once you go into that show building, everything gets really dark, and more importantly for this video, that makes it even more scary, everything gets really, really loud. That's why I had you listen at the beginning of this video, because this ride is jarring. If you're familiar with Snow White's Enchanted Wish, the version of this attraction that's still operating at Disneyland, the very first scene of this ride, they're throwing you right into it, is the witch transformation scene. A really neat effect that I have to gush about real quick for a second that's achieved with two separate figures turning at the exact same time, a queen one and a witch one, 
both on opposite sides of a pane of glass. That way you only see the queen while approaching the figure, but then when the hag animatronic turns around, the queen also turns around, obscuring her face, giving the illusion that the figure is turning away from a mirror, having transformed. It's awesome. So entering, I guess, the second scene of this attraction, we journey right into the evil queen's castle, where the very same effect happens, except this time, the witch doesn't just laugh, she screams in your ear. Now I'm talking over it, obviously, in this case, but you can go to Widen Your World's account and watch this full video without me talking over it in its entirety. You can tell that it's way, way louder than it was or currently is at Disneyland. After passing through the witch's dungeons with skeletons warning you to go the other way, you pass the witch dipping the poison apple in the cauldron, very similar to the enchanted wish, before finally exiting the castle. Only to be jump scared by the witch in a boat. She comes out really quick and of course she's cackling as loud as she can. Okay, so let's just quickly rediscuss what we've been through on this attraction already. A fun little scene outdoors where we see the dwarves' cottage and hear Snow White singing in a sunny glade. Then we've entered the witch's castle where she turns around and screams in our face before going through the dungeons full of dead bodies screaming at us to turn around even though we're on an attraction here man we cannot turn around we don't have control over this thing before seeing the witch dip the poison apple in the poison which i have to admit isn't super intense compared to the rest of this attraction it's what we essentially get at disneyland today just a little bit darker a little bit lower tech but then the jump scare with the witch in the boat which is probably my personal favorite scare of the attraction why is she jump scaring us? Why is she screaming at us? Nobody knows. We'll never know. The ride is gone. After successfully escaping the witch in the boat, we journey into a haunted forest, or at least a very spooky forest, with spooky looking trees and logs that look like crocodiles. Again, very reminiscent of Snow White's scary adventures previously at Magic Kingdom Disneyland. You know, it's, it's gone now, but we, it lives on in our minds. Now, of course, all of these gators and trees are lunging at you, but what's that off in the distance? Sanctuary? A safe haven? The dwarves cottage let's go inside surely it will be less scared nope nope this is also a complete and absolute nightmare okay great fantastic the dwarves cottage is nothing like what we see today at snow white's enchanted wish one it's nighttime and two every single thing in the cabin is absolutely terrified not just the animals or the dwarves but also the furniture oddly Here's a photo from Retro WDW that someone happened to snap on the inside of the dwarf's cottage, and you can see that even the furniture, even the wash basin, doesn't want to be there. Everything is absolutely terrified. So I think as a kid, seeing the warm glow of the dwarf's cottage just for it to lead to more nightmares, that would sort of be the most traumatizing part for me. It's here that we finally see the jolly, I mean, terrified seven dwarfs from the movie investigating a shadow in the room at the top of the stairs and of course yes they're all terrified because why wouldn't they be this ride is scary here's a wider shot of the staircase scene you can see all seven of the dwarfs and the shadow at the top of the stairs seems to have wings and horns you know like the devil not the funny little you know judge devil from mr toad's wild ride the actual devil from dante's inferno and of course, as I'm sure you can guess from this picture, yep, we're about to be jump scared again, because we are, and we do, because oh, there's the witch waiting for us, and of course she's cackling, I don't know what's so funny, I don't know who told the joke, but whoever did, it must have been killer, L literally. Ah, oh, great, and look at that, we're back out in the forest before descending into the dwarves' mine. Now this I can get behind, shiny gemstones, hi-ho, my favorite part of the movie, right? Uh, right, everyone? Okay, no, I, I I guess not. We're getting jump scared by minecarts at this point, everyone. Out of control minecarts. Oh, and there it is, right on cue. But then we enter a room full, of course, of shimmering gemstones. But who's that waiting for us at the end of the scene? That's right, the witch trying to dislodge a giant diamond. The next room is full of flashing lights and crashing sounds. Think the explosion scene from Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. And then the... Wait, that's it? The, the ride's over? So... No, get the, get the lights back on. Get the lights back on. So the ride ends with the witch dislodging a giant gemstone from the wall of the mine on top of our heads, crushing us, and the ride then ends. There's no hell scene. There's no true love's kiss scene. It just sort of ends and we go back out into fantasy land. Are we dead? The witch succeeded in killing us, the attraction guest? 
Well, if I had a nickel for every time that happened in a Fantasyland Dark Ride, I'd have two nickels. So overall, if you couldn't tell by the constant cackling and screaming in the video that I just sort of narrated over, the entire ride is very dark, very fast for a Fantasyland Dark Ride, and very, very loud, which I think contributes to its scariness uh, factor. Now that version of Snow White's Adventures remained in the parks for nearly 25 years, until in 1994, Disney decided that, you know, maybe this was a little bit too intense, and the attraction was closed in order to make it less frightening, less of a horror show. And it's not like the Magic Kingdom had a shortage of spooky attractions when it opened. The Haunted Mansion was an opening day attraction. If you wanted to be scared, you could just go over there, or it's a small world right down the way. But no, Snow White's Adventures remained there in Fantasyland to let you all know that you're not really in control here. It's Disney. Disney can do whatever they want, even if that means lying to you, telling you you're about to go on a fun little journey through a woodland glen and then through a dwarf's cottage in a mine. But no, in fact, Disney just kills you at the end of the ride and says, all right, have fun. Why don't you all go check out Mr. Toad's Wild Ride right next door? You've already been killed by a wicked witch. Why not just complete the whole deal and send yourself to hell? It's, it's a win-win for everybody involved. And you know, I even forgot to mention, although it seems important, most people getting on board a Snow White attraction would figure they would see Snow White somewhere in the ride, but this was not the case. As some of you may know, back in the early days of Fantasyland Dark Rides, the main character of the story never really showed up because we were supposed to be the main character of the story. We are stepping into the shoes of Snow White on Snow White's Adventures. We are Mr. Toad on Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. We are with Peter Pan on Peter Pan's flight. That one's a bit different. Say, for example, the original incarnation of Alice's adventures in Wonderland over at Disneyland. We never saw Alice because we were Alice. We saw supporting characters like Tweedledee and Tweedledum, and of course, the White Rabbit and the Red Queen, but Alice herself never showed up. It wasn't until later when all of these characters were added back into their dark rides because guests riding an Alice in Wonderland or Snow White themed ride didn't see Alice or Snow White, and that made them upset, that made them confused, and I would say rightfully so. And so, after a honestly pretty brief closure for only two months, Snow White's Scary Adventures opened in December of 1994, and the tone was much lighter, although they still preface that the ride was scary because it was still a bit intense compared to the other Fantasyland Dark Rides. It still wasn't a cute princess ride. It was, but it was a little bit nerve-wracking at some points. And oh, would you look at that? It's Snow White, she made it. Now Snow White's Scary Adventures is the version of the ride that I grew up with. I was really scared the first time I went on this, and this was post uh, nerfing, to use a gamer term. This was the less scary version of the attraction, and it still frightened young me. But nowadays, I'm going on Snow White's Enchanted Wish here, and a Peter Pan's Flight there, and a Mr. Toad's Wild Ride over, and over, and over again, and I'm barely scared. I mean, I cry a little bit, but it's not that bad, okay? The new version of these rides are, are very family friendly, and Snow White's Scary Adventures would eventually, of course, shut down to make room for something even more family friendly, but we're not talking about that quite yet. Snow White's Scary Adventures was the family friendly version of Snow White's Adventures, and even compared to Snow White's Enchanted Wish that exists currently at Disneyland, it was far more scary. That's, uh, <clears throat> that's, that's why they, they called it that. Because you would still have jump scares from the witch sort of popping out at random corners laughing at you, but it wasn't nearly as loud and it wasn't nearly as fast, and when you think you're going to go into the dwarf's cottage and get a reprieve from all the scary stuff, you actually do. The scene inside the dwarf's cottage is much happier than it was in the original incarnation. The dwarves are all happy dancing and playing their instruments, and you can even see instead of the dwarves on the staircase, there are instead some animals watching Snow White foolishly take some food from a stranger. Yes, this is what we would call a book report style ride. It follows the major beats from the movie. It's not the weird, creepy AU version that the original was. And the ending of the ride is essentially identical to the original Snow White Scary Adventures at Disneyland as it was before it became Enchanted Wish. The witch is trying to push a boulder onto you, she gets struck by lightning, she falls, and Snow White is woken from the death-like trance that she is in by True Love's Kiss. And the, the story ends on a, on a happy note, actually. Everyone's happy, nobody dies, nobody loses their life, well... 
uh, ex except for the the witch, the evil queen. She is actually 100% dead. She's she's paced underneath a boulder. Now, which version of the attraction is better? I think that's gonna come down to who you ask. I think if I myself today, as a 26 year old man, were to ride Snow White's Adventures, I think I would enjoy it. I think I would find the charm in it being so over the top and so spooky. Although I do think just as a general guest, you know, people visiting once a year, once in a lifetime, all the kids wanting to see Snow White, Scary Adventures was the superior version. There are things to like about both. However, in the year 2012, it didn't matter which one you liked more because Snow White's Scary Adventures would close forever. Before we go any further, I need to clarify something. It's, it's kind of been on my mind. There have been a lot of rumors online and I don't know where they come from. And I don't even know where they get started. But it's about a big expansion of Fantasyland at Walt Disney World. Well, these rumors are absolutely true. We are nearly doubling the size of Fantasyland to include more of your favorite princesses. Meeting a Disney princess is always a very special highlight of any visit to the Magic Kingdom. Okay, yeah, so <clears throat> let's talk about that for a second and the audience reaction because, whoo. The original concept for New Fantasyland at Walt Disney World included taking out a lot of the attractions that we knew and loved and replacing them with princess meet and greets. Think Enchanted Tales with Belle. Half attraction, half meet and greet. That's what most of New Fantasyland was going to be, and obviously people weren't super thrilled with this. Fantasyland was a place to go and enjoy, yes, meeting princesses, but also going on a carousel, going on a dark ride, enjoying the attractions. Attractions are very important. Important. So while the Bell Meet and Greet and Be Our Guest Restaurant, Gaston's Tavern, and the Little Mermaid Dark Ride were already being built, they couldn't really cancel that, so they kept those around, and instead of a giant Cinderella and Aurora meet and greet in the middle of the land, Tom Staggs decided to go in a different direction. An attraction that would appeal to both little boys and little girls, moms and dads, guests of all ages, and that new ride would be a roller coaster reusing old elements from Snow White's Scary Adventures, and as I'm sure you know, one of the most popular attractions Disney has ever built at Walt Disney World, the line is always very long, the Seven Dwarfs Mine Train. So now we have the Seven Dwarfs Mine Train, a markedly less scary version of a Snow White attraction, certainly more thrilling, and it contains little props, pieces, and references to its past. Like those two vultures, they're from Snow White's Scary Adventures. Those animatronics in the cabin at the end of the ride, also from Snow White's Scary Adventures. There's some remnants of the old attraction still there today. The show building that used to house Snow White's Scary Adventures then became a sort of shrunk down version of the original plan for New Fantasyland, with Princess Fairy Tale Hall, a princess meet and greet. So I guess at the end of the day, both fans and Disney got what they wanted out of New Fantasyland, unless you wanted 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea to stay around, and in which case you did not get what you wanted. So while Snow White's Scary Adventures and Snow White's Adventures may have closed forever, the remnants of them, their memory, still lives on at the Magic Kingdom and at Disneyland with Snow White's Enchanted Wish. There are still set pieces that these iconic, terrifying scenes from the Magic Kingdom version were based off of the witch turning around, the poison apple dip, all of it sort of echoes the past where attractions were allowed to be a lot spookier than they are today. And don't get me wrong, okay? It's tough to be a bug is absolutely horrifying. You, there's no other Disney ride where spiders descend from the ceiling and poke you in the butt. That's the only one. But in my honest opinion, Snow White's adventures at the Magic Kingdom was unique. What made Snow White's adventures the scariest ride at any of the Disney parks when it opened in 1971 is the sheer dishonesty of it. Like I said at the beginning of the video, it's called Snow White's Adventures. You're expecting a princess ride, maybe similar to Peter Pan's Flight or It's a Small World, the other rides that are located in that land. But once you board your cart and you go past that first scene that's actually kind of sweet, you are thrown into a loud, dark, and lights flashing area. It kind of disorients you, and Disney sort of misleading the guest, I think makes this experience that much more intense because you are not prepared when you go into this attraction for the first time. 
that's what makes it scary. But now I turn it over to you. Have you, my friend, watching this right now, ever been on Snow White's Scary Adventures or, heaven forbid, Snow White's Adventures at the Magic Kingdom? I would love to hear from you down in the comments below your memories on the ride. If how I described it pretty much lines up with how it is, or was I forgetting something? Was it scarier actually physically riding the attraction than it is just watching it and talking about it? I'm sure it was. This goes for my Disneyland friends watching this too. Do you prefer the original incarnation? of the ride, like way back, or do you prefer Snow White's Scary Adventures, or do you like what we have now with Enchanted Wish? I'm very curious to see the consensus, because I really do like Enchanted Wish. I actually would say that its story flows better than Scary Adventures, but Scary Adventures, man, that ride was scary. That's why they call it that, I guess, huh? Makes sense. But as for me, my friends, I must take my leave, but do not worry. You'll see more of me before the month is through. After all, this is the scariest month of the year, and what would a scary month be without a few spooky stories? So I look forward to seeing you all down the trail. Until next time. Welcome, mortals, to the end card for this video. I sure hope you enjoyed this video, where I talked about what I think is the scariest ride Disney has ever built. Yeah, extraterrestrial alien encounter is gonna scare the pants off of everybody. Sure, Haunted Mansion could be a little bit creepy, but Snow White? Then there's no way that ride will be scary, and then wham! It hits you with the most disarming, intense attraction you've ever been on in the year is 1971. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to hit the like button and hit the subscribe button if you're new around here and you want more videos like this. If you would, however, like videos a little bit earlier in the week, maybe some early access, you can head down to the link in the description down below to my Patreon, and even just $1 a month gets you access to the perks, and depending on which tier you pledge to, gets your names in a different featured segment in the last video of the month. If you would, however, rather just not pay anything and follow me on my other social media website accounts, that can absolutely be accomplished by going to Twitter, Instagram, or TikTok and searching for Offhand Disney. That's me. You can find me at Offhand Disney on all of those websites. But everybody, that is it for today's video. I sure hope you enjoyed this spooky tale woven by yours truly and a bunch of Imagineers over at the Walt Disney Company, and I look forward to seeing you next week for yet another tale of of terror. Goodbye.